Welcome to this ISO 9001 2015 change process and link to IETF 16949 2016 presentation. My name is Paul Hardiman, Director of Quality Partner. I've been involved in quality management systems for over 25 years and I'm an IATF witness auditor and also an IATF recognized trainer for certification body auditors. Many of you will be familiar with the structure of ISO 9001-2008, which the current ISO TS16949-2009 is based upon. This model is very much based upon a plan, do, check, act approach, with some responsibilities on management, which is in section 5, a section about resource management, which is section 6, the main product realisation processes, which are section 7, and then the measurement, analysis and improvement, which is in section 8, with the quality management system requirements in section 4. This is the model that the current ISO TS16949-2009 is based upon. So, why did ISO 9001 need to change? The reason was the Common Framework Annex SL. ISO made a fundamental decision in 2012 that all management system standards would be revised around the Common Framework. In this Common Framework, there are common definitions, for example, organisation, interested party, policy, competence, conformity, and there are also examples of common identical texts. For example, top management shall ensure that responsibilities and authorities for the relevant roles are assigned and communicated within the organisation. This common framework was designed to be used for any future revision of management system standards. So yeah, the reason for change in ISO 9001 was to align it with this new Annex SL, but also the ISO committee periodically reviews the standards and every five years nominally quality management system standards are reviewed by the ISO Technical Committee. The brief for this revision was to decrease the emphasis on documentation, increase the emphasis on achieving value for the organisation and its customers, and also increasing emphasis on risk management to achieve the organisation and the customer specified objectives. So as with the revision of any standard, it goes through a structured revision process. In May 2013, we saw the committee draft for the ISO 9001-2015 revision. That then moved on to the draft international standard, which was published in May 2014. In July 2015, we saw the final draft international standard. And finally, in September 2015, we saw the publication of ISO 9001-2015. As with the revision in previous editions, the International Standards Organisation developed a three-year transition programme for organisations certified to ISO 9001-2008. So that three-year revision started in September 2015, and all organisations certified to ISO 9001-2008 have to make the transition to ISO 9001-2015 by September 2018. So the first thing that we all have to get used to is the structure of ISO 9001-2015 based upon the structure of Annex SL. There are 10 sections within ISO 9001-2015. Section 1, Scope. 2, normative references and three terms and definitions are all there as introductions. These sections are not auditable but are set in the context for the structure of the standard. From section 4 which is context of the organisation right the way through to section 10 which is improvement all those sections will be covered by an ISO 9001-2015 audit. So I think one of the very good things about this model is it is still based upon a plan, do, check, act approach. But unlike the previous version, leadership are at the centre of the model. So all the requirements in section 5 of ISO 9001-2015 are related to leadership. The other thing that you will see on both sides of the diagram 
are not just understanding the customer requirements, but understanding the requirements of all interested parties. This is one of the significant changes that we'll talk about later within the presentation. The other thing that you will see is that the organisation has to set the context which it is operating. This is a key uh, role for top management to define the strategic direction of the organisation taking into account internal and external factors. Another key factor is that the standard is still very much based upon the process approach. The process approach was first introduced in year 2000 by the revision of ISO 9001 then and it is still very much inherent within the ISO 9001-2015. So this means that the organisation must have within its quality management system a clearly defined set of processes. And one of the new requirements that we will see in ISO 9001-2015 is that these quality management system processes are aligned with the organisation business processes. Now any process has to have sources of inputs, inputs, value-added activities, outputs, and then the outputs will be received by interested parties. These interested parties could be people working within the organisation, they could be the customer or they could be other relevant interested parties. So now let's take a look at the changes in ISO 9001-2015 and how they've affected automotive quality management systems. So the automotive management scheme is managed by the International Automotive Task Force. What you can see now is the structure of IATF. IATF is not a legal entity. IATF is made up of a number of global OEMs and national supplier organisations. The national supplier organisations are the organisations responsible for the management on a day-to-day -day basis of the Automotive Quality Management Certification Scheme. Currently there are five global oversight offices which is AMFIA, IATF France, IAOB in America, SMMT in the UK and VDA QMC in Germany. So these are the organisations that are responsible for liaising and dealing and managing with the stification bodies responsible for the stification of organisations against the automotive quality management scheme. So let's now take a quick look at the evolution of the ISO TS16949 scheme. Going back into the 90s, there were various different automotive quality management system standards. Many of you will be uh, familiar with QS9000, which was led by the American automotive industry. The VDA6 standards, which were very much led by the German automotive manufacturers. ABSQ, which was led by the Italian manufacturers. And EAQF, which was led by the French manufacturers. This posed a nightmare for organisations in the global automotive supply chain that were supplying more than one country vehicle makers. At that time it meant that organisations had to have separate certificates relevant to the country of the vehicle manufacturer they were supplying. In 1999 we saw the historic landmark of ISO TS 16949 first edition issued. Then we saw the revision of ISO-TS in year 2002, that was the second edition, and then in 2009 we saw the third edition of ISO-TS 16949. All of these were based upon the relevant version of ISO 9001, and all of these required an organisation not only to require that they understand the requirements of ISO TS16949, but also they understand customer specific requirements, which are additional to the ISO TS16949 requirements. So, based upon the change in ISO 9001 2015, IETF had to start the revision process for ISO TS16949. The process started in 2015. One of the fundamental decisions that IETF made was to publish the document not as ISO TS16949 but as IATF16949 and they made it very clear that they still wanted to keep alignment with the international standard ISO 9001-2015. 
What we saw in October of 2016 is the final publication of IETF 16949-2016. Also, IETF have been working in parallel to this revision on updating the rules for achieving IETF recognition. And it's expected in November of 2016 that we will see the fifth edition of the rules issued which will make the alignment to the new IATF 16949. One of the decisions that IATF made was to make sure that the transition for organisations that are already certified to ISO TS 16949-2009 to make sure that that transition to the new IATF 16949-2016 is made at the very latest by September 2018. Now this puts quite a time pressure on organisations to make a successful transition to the new standard. So what you can see on the screen now then is the front cover for the Automotive Quality Management System Standard IETF 16949-2016. The quality management system requirements for automotive production and relevant service part organisations. And obviously this is the first edition of the document and as I said, it was published on the 1st of October 2016. One of the important things for organisations to understand is the goal of IATF 16949. This provides a framework for an organisation's continual improvement, the emphasis on defect prevention, and also the promotion of the reduction in variation and waste in the supply chain. IATF have not changed this goal. This goal is basically the same as it was in ISO TS16949. But it's very important for you organisations that are looking to transition to IATF that you keep this goal at the front of your mind. This change process is not just about updating your documentation, but to make sure that any changes that you make continue to provide for continual improvement of your organisation. That it really does focus on reducing defects both internally within your organisation but even more importantly defects at your customer because obviously the aim is you do not produce defects but also to stay in business organisations have to continually improve and that will result in the variation and the waste in the supply chain being reduced. So please when you go into this revision process please keep this goal at the front of your mind. In making the transition, one of the key documents that you need to look at is the IATF Transition Strategy converting organisations from ISO TS16949 to IATF16949. This document is available for download free of charge at the IATF Global Oversight website, which you can see on the screen. Within this transition document, one of the clear statements that IATF have made that after 1st of October 2017, no audit shall be conducted to ISO TS16949-2009. Also, in organisations making the transition, the transition audit to IATF16949 will be the duration of a recertification audit. Also time needs to be included by the certification body auditors for an off-site review of your organisation documentation which should demonstrate you've aligned your systems to meet the new IATF requirements. The transition audit must cover the site that represents the value added manufacturing processes but also any relevant remote support functions. I re-emphasise again that the transition for the site and any relevant support functions must be completed by September 2018. All of this is defined within the transition strategy. So this slide then really just summarises the transition process. In September 2015 we saw the publication of ISO 9001-2015. IATF then worked on the new Automotive Quality Management Standard that was published as IATF 16949-2016. That was published on the 1st of October 2016. The transition process starts on January 2017 
By that stage, the certification body should have qualified auditors that can undertake the transition audit. And then another key timetable is September 2018, when the transition to IETF 16949 2016 must be formally completed. That timescale means that the audit has to be undertaken, the transition audit, plus any non-conformities from the transition audit have to be effectively addressed and verified by the certification body as closed before the new IETF certificate can be issued.